Hey, it's Josh here at Modern Frontiersman. So I've done a video on this topic before. I think it was just a little short. And today I'm going to do a little bit more in-depth one. Behind me, I'm at the what I call the top of our land. It's basically the, you know, the highest point of our land. And it's completely covered in a perfect survival food. A food that people think is weeds. You know, they'll spend countless hours and money trying to kill. Uh, even, you know, states and counties try to get rid of it. And most average people don't know you can eat it. So if you hadn't figured it out already, the plant I'm talking about, which you see all behind me, is kudzu. All right. So I did a little video on this before telling you you can eat kudzu. Don't believe me? We eat it all the time. And um, so kudzu is native to China, Japan, Korea. It's used in, in cooking in all those Asian countries. Um, it's been used uh, in traditional Chinese medicine for over 2,000 years. Right? It has a lot of different uses, which is why it has been used for so long. So it's, it has some strong antioxidant properties. Uh, it's used to treat diabetes. It can treat fever, heart disease, menopausal symptoms, and digestion issue relief. It's pretty handy stuff, you know, to be a weed that everybody's trying to kill. Uh, you know, it's often called the weed that uh, took over the south or whatever. Chances are, if you live in the south, you see it. If you don't have it on your land, it's definitely growing on the side of the road. Up telephone poles, up trees, you see it all over the place. I don't know places further up north, maybe it doesn't grow, I don't know. But I've heard people up as far up in Indiana and places say that they have it there as well. So, I think it grows pretty much everywhere. There's a lot of rumors about it, people say. Some people are even afraid of it. People say that it's full of snakes, that snakes bed down in it. There's some weird, like superstitious stuff about it that because it grows so fast and so prolific that the vines will follow you and all kind of weird stuff. But a lot of this part, a lot of parts of this plant are, are edible. The leaves, like I said, like you just saw me eat, um, parts of the vines, the shoots, of course, um, the, the roots, and um, the flower which right now there's no flowers on them. Later in the year, you'll start seeing purple flowers all over. But you know, it's a very, it's a very, it is a very invasive plant, but it grows these long vines and they are unstoppable. They'll grow underground, they'll grow under the road. They will just, they will cover everything. If there's somewhere for them to go, they're gonna go. Uh, and you know, they are, they're one of those plants that really show the power of, of patience and slow and steady. You know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. They can just like cut through stuff, literally cut through stuff. Uh, it's, it's near impossible to stop kudzu. Uh, but you know, as you see, our land is covered in it on this part of our land, right? So it's everywhere, all up the side of this hill, everywhere. And it's okay with me. As you can see, it's growing up that magnolia tree right there. I do want to get it off that magnolia tree because I, I like, I like those, I like magnolias, but, um, as far as it being across the ground right here, I'm good with that. We'll eat it, and if it come down to it, you know, this this might be something that could help us survive. You know, if if food started to get really scarce and you know, crop our crops failed or whatever, and you know, it's severe SHTF, uh, and you know, it come down to it, this kudzu could 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 really save us. So there's some nutritional facts. That's why I got my little notebook here because I can't remember all that stuff, right? If you can, cool, but I can't remember all these percentages and things like that. So nutritional facts of kudzu, uh, this is based on 100 grams of cooked leaves, uh, 36 calories, 89% moisture content, 0 0.4 grams of protein, and 9.7 grams of carbs. Like I said, that's in 100 grams of cooked leaves. So they are, um, the kudzu is, is full of potassium, calcium, magnesium, uh, iron, dietary fibers, and probi uh, prebiotic fibers. The leaves, you can eat them all kind of different ways, and we do. Uh, we you know, raw, you can eat it raw like spinach. Uh, you can bake it at like 375 degrees for about, um, I think about 15 minutes with some salt or some season on it, and it makes like kale chips. Of course, not kale chips, but kudzu chips. Uh, it's it's better than kale. Um, you can have you can fry them like deep fry them, uh, boil them of course like uh, like collard greens or turnip greens. 
steam saute it doesn't I've done that before just put a little olive oil in the pan and then just kind of sliced up some leaves and just sauteed them or with some some steak or chicken or whatever it's good man it's like I mean it's just like any other green and I've also just wrapped them uh, wrapped like say just wrap tomatoes or wrap them around tomatoes and dip them in ranch in the raw leaves and it's really good I've made salads uh, with kudzu you know just tore the leaves up and just used it instead of lettuce uh, it's got more of a, it, it's got more of a flavor, of course. It's got like a, I want to say like a, let's get one of these small leaves. They're usually better, the little baby ones. I'm going to eat another piece so I can tell you what it tastes like. I guess you could say sort of a citrusy taste, you know. Imagine like the texture or the feel of any other green, except that kudzu's got like, it's kind of a little bit fuzzy if you can get past that, but. Other than that, it's the crunch and everything like any other green, but it has like a slight, I guess you could say citrusy sort of taste. It's good. I like it. Uh, you can also cook the roots. Uh, you can um, eat them like any, any root vegetable, like potatoes or we'll say rutabagas or, or whatever, you know, anything like that. Just, just boil them up or cook them just like you would any, any potato. Uh, the dried root powder, so if you dry out the roots and then grind it into powder, it can be used as a thickener, like for a roux, like for soups or, you know, gumbo and things like that. Um, or you can also use it for breading, it, uh, you know, say for frying fish and frying other things like that. I have not done that. It's really hard to find the roots. I have found them a few times, but you think since these roots are so long and they go forever, like it's really hard. Like I could grab the end of this and try to trace it back to the root and it could be like way on the other side of that hill so it's it's kind of hard to find to find those roots uh, but if you can they are very useful and i know of people who will go out and and just all day long just looking for kudzu roots because of their because of its medicinal properties and things like that uh, because like i said it has been used in traditional chinese medicine for you know thousands of years so the flowers, they are, uh, have a very flu uh, fruity flavor and can be used for making uh, jams and jellies and even wine. So if you're into that kind of stuff, making jelly and, and making wine, uh, you can use the, the uh, flowers from kudzu. And you, like I said, I showed the picture of them before. They're that really pretty purple flower. And they, I like the way they smell. I like the way kudzu smells. It makes our land right here smell really good. I like, I like the smell of it. But I love kudzu. It is probably my favorite um, survival uh, food, if you will, or, you know, wild edible. Um, because it's just so prolific, it's everywhere. And um, it looks cool. You know what I mean? Like, it looks like you're, you know, like up in the mountains of China or something. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, it doesn't bother me like it does a lot of people because I know how useful it is. So I recommend you go out. And if you know where there's some kudzu, get some and just try it. It's good. It's not going to kill you. I mean, I wouldn't get it off the side of the road, you know, because it's got exhaust and junk all over it. But if there's a, you know, safe place for you to harvest it from, try it. Why not? It's very edible. It's good for you. And the best part is, after SHTF, most people don't know you can even eat it. So it might be a secure food source for you. Okay, so try kudzu. Eat the weed that ate the south. As always, stay self-reliant.